This week on the Computer Chronicles, information overload. Need to get organized? We'll show you the latest in personal information managers. Too much email to handle? We'll look at Emailer, a tidy way to manage the glut of electronic information coming your way. Can't keep up with all the papers and magazines you should be reading? Try the new personalized Wall Street Journal. We'll also show you how to find what you need on the net, and we'll look at an incredible new summarizer that can read for you. All this plus Giles Online, this week's computer news and my pick of the week, coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Hewlett Packard Personal Computers, developing PCs for business. Additional funding from the Software Publishers Association. Providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that plot. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. Well, we're living in the information age. Tell me about it. So much information, so little time. You've got to start somewhere to try and manage the glut of data that surrounds you. Now, for some people, this is an information management system, matchbook covers, yellow post-it notes, napkins, those little pink memo slips, etc. Some people are using a day timer, one of these good old-fashioned paper systems over here. But a better solution, I guess, Rob, is what you guys have done and take the day timer mentality, literally put it onto a PC with your day timer organizer. Give us an idea of how the day timer works in the PC environment. Sure. The day timer organizer transports, as you said, the paper-based system onto the computer giving you all the views that you're, you're familiar with, the daily planner, weekly planner, monthly planner, your address book. So let's so take forth. a look at the typical calendar where I'd keep sure. most of my stuff. The daily planner has your, your, your schedule on the left, so you can see when you're busy and when you're not busy, your to-dos, along with your overdue items. Mm -hmm. So using the computer, you don't have to continually rewrite those to-dos over and over again. The upcoming section gives you the ability to, to, again, exploit the power of the computer. It can tell you about events before they, they occur. So let's say you have a birthday mm -hmm. that you need to get a card out in the mail. Well, if that happens, if you only know about it the day that it happens, it's a little too right. late. So you get to tell And you program that in and say, I want five days Five days, six days, yourself. week, whatever, whatever you want. The thing I like about using your PC as opposed to a little handheld thing is you've got a big screen and I can see my schedule and my to-dos and the full month calendar and the upcomings all on one screen without jumping up and back and trying right. to find this stuff. And we've done it in a way that it's, so you're already familiar with it. It looks like your paper-based yeah. planner, so there's no relearning to do. All right, another nice thing about this is you've got an expense account piece of software really built into it, and that's another pain in the neck with little pieces of paper in your pockets right. the whole time. Let's say you go on a conference, then, you know, where do you, where do you store all the information about the taxi ride, the breakfast, the airfare? Well, the expense organizer is the place that you put that information. Then you can total it up, print it out, Using uh, IntelliLink software, you can you can send it to to your your favorite database or spreadsheet. Yeah. All right. Now you talked about printing out. One of the other features that's important. You don't always have your PC or your notebook with you, and maybe you want the security of a piece of paper. You have an easy function for doing that. First of all, show us what that looks like. So you can really just convert that screen page here to a more typical daytimer kind of looking page. Right. Now, this is usually a pain in the neck printing this stuff out because suppose I want it in this format or whatever, I've got to print on both sides and go up and this. How do you do that with, exactly. with Daytimer? Daytimer Organizer recognizes most popular printers. And for those that it doesn't recognize, you can have it go through some sort of paper handling uh, procedure so we can learn how your paper feeds through the printer. Could you show me what that looks like? Yeah. When you, when you go through the paper, after the paper setup, then there's still the, well, how do I feed it? Right. So we give you a screen that shows you if you're doing single-sided, how you feed it, it through. Right, right. If you're doing double-sided, what does the first pass look like and what does the second pass look like? All right, last thing I want you to show us, Rob, is the main benefit, it seems to me, of putting a day timer in a PC is what you've done is turn it into a big database, which is searchable, and so I can find things which I would otherwise lose if they're in my pocket, right? Exactly. Let's say that uh, you're going to Seattle and you want to know everybody in your address book that's in Seattle. Who are the possible people I might want to call while I'm in Seattle? Exactly. So you go into the custom search feature and you just you pick the, the city field, mm -hmm. and you select Seattle, and there's everybody that I know in Seattle. Can't do that, with, like bits, that. with bits of paper. Right. All right, exactly. thanks a lot, Rob. 
All right, well, the epitome of information overload is certainly today's Internet, terabytes of information, but how to find what you want? Well, there is help on the way with a new program called Magellan. At the California Historical Society in San Francisco, the vaults contain over half a million photographs. Researchers typically come in to sift through the photos by hand, one at a time. Their search will soon be simplified greatly, thanks to a project underway to put all of the Society's visual resources online for both local and internet access. We're actually taking all the work we've been doing for the last four years and we're formatting it so it'll have web access directly. And what we've decided we want to do is actually provide content where um, instead of developing thematic information, what we want is just the information to be connected in a way with hooks that anyone searching for particular information is able to retrieve exactly what they're looking for. The online photography project is just one aspect of the future of digital searches. The second part is finding a way to hunt the vast, uncharted world of the Internet. And a program called the Magellan Internet Directory is a step in that direction. They're actually evaluating sites and rating those. And rather than going to the web and, say, uh, searching on a common word with us, something like gold and gold rush would be a common word. And you typically could come back with something like 15,000 hits on the word gold. So what they've done with Magellan is actually to go out and rate these and, and find um, more critically good sites and have descriptions of those so that you actually find the, the more robust sites and the ones that are more crucial to your particular interest. Magellan reviews, rates, and describes sites across the whole internet, from the World Wide Web to news groups. Researchers can be as specific or general as they like, so while the web may have become a maze of information, it also contains tools to find your way. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bateman. a way to find the right websites, but what about all that email that keeps pouring into your computer? Well, we've got a solution for you there, too. It's called Emailer from Claris, and Michael's here to tell us about it. All right, this is my problem. I've got five different email accounts, and I'm tired of having to sign up on five different accounts every single morning to check my mail. How does Emailer solve my problem? Well, Claris Emailer is an easy way to take all that mail and consolidate it in what we like to call one universal mailbox. So I only have to do one thing in the morning, not five things? Absolutely. All right, then show me how we do it. Well, like you mentioned, setting up schedules. Now, what, what schedules? So, Claris Emailer is a way to automatically go and, and retrieve the mail. So, how frequently accounts. do I want to check my mailboxes? Absolutely. Okay. And you can do that on a recurring every four hours, every mm -hmm. 20 minutes, every two minutes, or you can actually set up custom schedules. So, I could check different accounts with different frequencies? Absolutely. Okay, or like on weekends, say only once a day is enough or whatever. That's right. And like you mentioned, you can check your internet account, AOL account, or CompuServe account. All in one place. All, all automatically in the background while you work on other things. Huh. All right, so show me the different views now that we just looked at before here. Okay. So this is the inbox? This is the inbox, and you also have an outbox where you save mail that you're ready right. to send out, a filing cabinet where you store mail you've already read, and an address book for all those addre electronic mail addresses you want to keep. Okay, let's go back to the inbox. That's where the action is here. Sure. All right, so what, what is it, all this telling me here? In the inbox, this is all your incoming mail, and at a glance, you can tell whether or not you've read the okay, mail. Okay, so that's read. Check as I exactly. read it. Exactly. A little paper clip. There's Enclosure. a file attached. Okay. Exactly. And this tells me if I've replied to this person. Mm -hmm. What's great is you can sort on any of these topics up here. So if you want to work by sorting it by date, mm -hmm. you want it the most recent first, that's fine. Right. You can sort by who sent it. And you can also sort by these priorities. Okay. Now let's talk about the priorities and I guess what you call mail actions or filters here and show us how that works because that's a real valuable tool also. Sure. So I mean I can have sort of an automated secretary organizing this stuff for exactly, me, Exactly. Right? Because everything you need to do with the mail is available, but you can also have it automatically done for you. Okay. And these mail actions are a way to automatically sort your incoming mail. So I can set up criteria. Exactly. And say, this is in, this is out, this is important, this is not important. That's right, and it's very flexible. So, for instance, by the subject, keywords in the subject, who it's from, who it's to. And okay, you can so just any mail from Joe, make a top priority. Exactly. Anything dealing with the budget, make a top priority. Right, and you can... Stuff from that other guy, trash it or whatever. Change priority level, okay. file it. Actually, and you can also reply automatically. Send back an email automatically to that person. Uh-huh. 
Okay, now what about sort of keeping track of all my mail? What's the filing system look like? Well, in the filing cabinet, you can come in, you can actually create custom folders very easily just by adding a folder, give it a name, we'll just call this one Claris. Mm -hmm. And just by looking through, it pops up all the mail that you have in there. You can drag and drop the mail into different folders if you like. And there's even a powerful find function. So if you want to find different messages, and you can read them automatically just like that. Okay, so on checking all again, my, my, I want to make sure because okay. all these different email accounts, I can automate the whole thing. Absolutely. Walk away, come back, it's logged on, it's got it together, put it together, done the priorities, and this is what's in my box. One place to look. All right. Well, if you were to look inside my office, you would see a picture of information overload. Magazines and newspapers piled about this high. Who has time to read all this stuff? Well, now you can get a paper that carries only the information you want. It's called the Personal Journal, and here to tell us about it is Josie. All right, the Personal Journal is really a customized newspaper, only with the stuff I want in it. Exactly. It's a customized electronic edition of the Wall Street Journal that brings you the top news Wall Street Journal editors want you to read, plus news that matches your profile. All right, how do I set this thing up? How do I tell it what I want to read and, and give it those criteria? Okay, well, the first thing you do um, is you go to your personal news profile. And there you choose either companies or Wall Street Journal columns. Okay, that you want so to first select. thing companies is I'm interested in these 20, 25 companies. Anytime exactly. there's a story about them, I want to know about it. Exactly. So in our case, we might just want to. Can wanna you do categories rather than company names? Can I say high tech or anything? No, I it's need the company names. You need the company okay. names. But the way high tech works, you pretty much will hit most of the companies Got in it. a given story. So if we were going to add Hewlett Packard, mm -hmm. you type in the first few letters, click add, and then it would add be on it to our my list. Profile. All right, what about columns? Exactly. Well, for you, Stuart, I'm sure you follow Walt Mossberg's okay, column so I pretty make carefully. Sure I read Walt's exactly. Column every week. So you'd go down and you'd pick personal technology, uh -huh. which is down there here. It is, right? Exactly. So make sure you put his column in That's there. That's right. Me. That's right. Hmm. There we go. Is and there some point when I sort of overload it? I mean, is there a limit to how much stuff I can There is a total of 25 that okay. you can track, but we've really found that that pretty much covers people's news interest. Okay, so this is what the paper would look like when it comes to me? That's right. And describe what the elements are. Okay, well, here what you're basically looking at is the front page of the Wall Street Journal. So you've got the business and finance and worldwide columns, the full text. Mm -hmm. Plus, you've got, in our case, 29 stories from the Wall Street Journal that came in that matched your profile. So I'm seeing all that summary stuff that's usually on the front page. Exactly. Plus my full text customized stories. Yep, yep, and let's take a look at one of them. This one is about IBM naming someone to head up their internet mm -hmm. software strategy. So as you can see, you have the full text. Of the now, article. how do I tell it when to check and how frequently will it download the paper and so on? Right. Um, one of the newest features we just added to the product is something called personal delivery. And we can take a look at that. And what personal delivery allows you to do is to schedule deliveries throughout the day. Um, so I can get more than one edition a day? Exactly. With new updated information? Exactly, because we also publish the Dow Jones News Service in addition to the Wall so Street I Journal. So I can get an afternoon edition of the journal if I want. That's right. So how do I do that? Um, well, you can you could have it available as early as 3 o'clock in the morning Eastern Standard Time, but most of us don't get up right. that early. So if we were to schedule you, I bet you're an early in the morning okay. person. So we've got your first paper coming in at 6.15 mm -hmm. and then let's have another one when it's time for you to leave work about 12 hours later. And it would automatically dial up, pull down the paper. Now can I do auto print too? So when yep. I come down in the morning there's paper in my printer? Exactly. Just like having it on your front doorstep, it could be right there by your computer. Now you also have stock information. I can actually get graphs out of this too, not text, right? Exactly. Exactly. Here, let's just finish that. Finish our scheduling. And... Um, a really great feature that a lot of our customers have said they really use a lot is having a personal new, having a personal quote profile, uh -huh. not personal quotes, 25 companies and mutual funds that they want to follow. Okay, so the stocks they want to follow. Yep. Now, now I think there's also like the Dow Jones curve I can also look at. Yep, you can also, it wouldn't be a publication from Dow Jones if it didn't have <laughs> um, right. some pretty good market information. So as we can see, the industrial averages have been trending up and then there's key indicators down on the bottom of the screen. And in the electronic version, I saw there's a ticker going across the top. What yep. is that? Um, well, Personal Journal uses something called Burst Disconnect, so we're not online right now, uh -huh. but the information that's in Personal Journal is as up-to-date as when you had it delivered. So I really have my own little private ticker going across that's the top right. of the screen. That's right, that's right, and there's a bowl in the upper left which shows you the market's going up. Personal Journal, I love it, thank you. One of the problems in looking for the right electronic information is that it can take so long to get the data you want. Most of us are still prisoner to slow telephone lines and slow network technologies. But new solutions are on the way to speed up the movement of information.
Mr. Anderson, yeah. turn your head all the way to the left, please. This camera is going to come very At the Kaiser Permanente Medical Center in San Francisco, cardiologists will soon have a new tool for the treatment of cardiovascular disease. Unlike instruments used in the operating chamber, this device won't require sterilization, but it does need to be connected to a high-speed transmission line. The medical center is testing a digital imaging system capable of delivering video at 30 frames per second in real time across an asynchronous transfer mode network, or ATM. The network, funded by Pacific Bell, will replace thousands of reels of film. The ability to access these images remotely will be used in, in several ways. One is it will enable the, fish, the cardiologists to get the result of the angiogram much sooner than he would otherwise. Uh, currently, a cardiologist has to wait until he gets the dictated report from a cardiac catheterization procedure. One angiogram study contains about two minutes of video or about two gigabytes of digitized data. So transmission speed and capacity are critical issues. Kaiser physicians perform over 5,000 angiograms per year. Once the ATM network is in place, referring physicians in distant locations will not only have instant access to stored images, they may also take part in the operation as it takes place. Many of these patients are seriously ill and some are acutely sick at the time that uh, the studies are, are performed. And we need to make rapid decisions about uh, major interventions such as bypass surgery or balloon angioplasty or other transcatheter treatments for coronary artery disease. So this uh, communications system will allow rapid decision making that involves two physicians, one here locally who has uh, new anatomic data about the patient and the physician at home who knows the patient best of all. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bacon. to help me manage information overload is a reader, someone to read all this stuff and then give me the highlights. Well, there is now a software program that can do that for you. It's called IntelliX. David, it's not, I guess, a software program. This is really a service your company provides. Exactly. It's a service we provide to corporations. All right. Now, what's the underlying technology that can do this? There are two pieces of technology. The first is artificial intelligence neuronet technology, and that actually goes through all the articles and, and determines the relevance. And the second piece is what we call our, our natural language summarizer technology. Now, now, how does it know what's relevant? What are the rules here? Uh, it really knows what's relevant by taking your, your personality, your personality information needs, and determining those. So you can give it an article, a couple of articles, and over time it gets to know your needs and creates a relevance from those. So it kind of tracks what I do. It says, well, he pulls down articles about the budget, so he cares about that. He pulls down high-tech stuff. He must care about high-tech stuff. Yes. So that's a high-value word to him. Exactly right. All right, can we take a look at how this actually works? So sure. What do we have here, a bunch of articles that might have come from a newspaper or a newswire? These are, we've actually taken about 50,000 articles and run them through our artificial intelligence. So we have all the relevance here now. So the next step is we're going to take those and summarize them. So here's an article on uh, Gingrich, Dollar, okay, So that, that's a full text article as it came down. Yes. And the blue words are the, the high value relevant words? Exactly. That it's going to build on. All right, so show me what the computer version of an outline of this article okay, is. Okay, so we go to what we call the executive summary, and it actually pulls articles from different points in the article that might not necessarily have been the lead story or the lead article. All right, so based on what I'm interested in, it's mm -hmm. telling me that this is not really about Newt Gingrich as it appeared in the real text article, but this is pharmaceuticals, healthcare, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly right. Now, now what's the, the bullet point version of this? Is that even tighter? Well, if you're going through hundreds of articles a day, even if they're relevant, you may not want to read the summaries. You may want to just read bullets. Uh-huh. So that's a really tight one. Show us another article so we can get this, okay, see how this works. Let's see if we can go down here and see something. Here's one uh, New economy. on the economy. So there's the bullet version. It's about So I know it's about family incomes increasing, and it's about low-income work families. Right. And if you go to the full text, you can see it talks about the economy, Republicans, income. So they were the hot words. Mm -hmm. And then show me the kind of IntelliX outline. Yeah. Hmm. And those appear low in the article in this particular one and uh, wouldn't necessarily be right at the top. Okay, now 
Is this only limited to news articles? I mean, can I apply this to any data? I mean, can I run my email through this engine so it will uh, summarize my email for you me? You can run anything. You can have your college kids uh, run their books through it and have it summarized. You can have corporations run their email through it, so you can get the short version of that. Well, now, this right now it runs under Unix, as I understand it. So Correct. it's sort of tied to the whole server. I can't go out and apply this to, to my word processor. No, not quite yet. But maybe sometime soon? Yes, sometime soon. Okay, David, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we looked earlier at Magellan, one way to navigate through the information overload on the Internet. But Giles has some other ideas on how to find what you want online. Thanks, Stuart. Information overload is definitely a problem, and if you're online, it can only make the information come in faster. So if you find yourself overwhelmed by the total amount of information on the web and you're looking for something specific, come to the whole Internet catalog. Now, here they have got a list of and links to some of the best search engines and catalogs on the net, so you can go to those according to what you're interested in. But they've also got a number of categorized pages of their own. So depending on if you're interested in business uh, information, best of the net, those sorts of things, you can break down your search before you really get started, and it won't be as overwhelming. Now also here, if you are into reading technology news, you might want to check out Cyber Clips because if you read every single periodical, you'd have to go through more than a thousand pages a day. Cyber Clips goes through and they pick what they think are some of the most important or most interesting little clips of the news. And so you can go through and uh, read, I think it's weekly, you can go in and get information, just little tidbits here and there. Now if you are an email user, what you'll want to do is if your email client will handle this, have it automatically file as much as possible. Reduce the number of messages you have to deal with. That helps tremendously break down information overload. And don't check your email more than twice a day. That's really too much. And last but not least, what my favorite button on every modem, good for dealing with information overload, is the on-off switch. Use it. Now time for our weekly summary of what's new in the field of personal computing. Here's this week's Random Access. In the random access file this week, if you waited until after Christmas to buy a new printer, your timing was good. Hewlett Packard has announced an 18% price cut in three of its leading printer models, the DeskJet, the DeskWriter 600, and the DeskJet 600C color printer. Each will now sell for under $300. International Data Corporation predicts 1996 will be the year of the Internet hangover. The technology consulting firm says the new year will see many companies pulling out of expensive investments in Internet websites, which are not making money. IDC also predicts that some of the current commercial online services, CompuServe, AOL, Prodigy, and MSN, will face difficult times in 96. And there are signs of a changing cyber landscape. The Los Angeles Times says it is shutting down its presence on Prodigy in favor of a new website on the Internet. Alaska Airlines has become the first airline to launch its own website on the net that will allow passengers to purchase tickets online without going through a traditional computer reservation system such as American's Easy Sabre or the United Connection. Access Corporation says it has made deals with several Japanese television manufacturers to bundle new Internet access capability with a TV set. Access says the new TV sets will be out later this year and will enable you to do email and browse websites using only your television set. The net is still an open door into your information house, according to the Computer Emergency Response Team at Carnegie Mellon University. The online watchdog group reports a rash of Internet break-ins to corporate and educational computer systems over the holidays. Internet radio is taking a major step forward. Hollywood reporter Elliot Stein has announced the launch of NetChat, a regularly scheduled audio interview show distributed via the Internet. The new CyberTalk show launched last week. The address is audionet.com on the World Wide Web. And you can now send email to the Pope. The Vatican launched its new website on Christmas Day. The site was deluged with get well messages for Pope John Paul. The Vatican says more than 300,000 people visited the new website within the first two days of its launch. The Vatican's home page can be found at vatican.va. Finally, Lake Superior State University has released its list of the most overused cliches of the past year. Leading the list were the terms cyberspace and online. That's it for this week's Random Access. I'm Laurie Anderson. Back to you, Stuart. Now for my pick of the week. There are a few computer applications that by themselves can justify the price of buying a computer. Spreadsheets, 
tax preparation software, role-playing games, but I have found another one, CD-ROM phone books. The local phone book, this kind of thing over here is one of the most stupid ways of presenting information. It's out of date the minute you get it, and our colleagues, families, and friends are scattered all over the country these days. So if you're trying to find someone's phone number, you really need a national phone book. Well, you know how big that would be. Well, just this big. This is Select Phone from ProCD, one of several national electronic phone books. Talking about bringing this all together, this is all of us right here. Nearly 100 million names, phone numbers, and addresses, and all searchable. You can find old schoolmates, lost relatives, former co-workers whom you've lost track of. This is a perfect and simple example of the power of a PC. These CD-ROM phone books cost under $30, and some of them offer real-time updates online. You'll never again need one of these big things. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. We'll be back here again next week with more of the latest in personal computer technology. I'm Stuart Chaffee. Thanks for joining us.